In today's video, I will explain what a diffusion model is in the modern artificial intelligence domain. By the end of the video, you will understand how diffusion-based generative models work. You will also learn how to generate simple forms of data using Python, of course, by implementing a diffusion model. You can tailor the Python code for your projects. A diffusion-based generative model can be used for various tasks, including synthesizing new data samples like images or text. I will generate simple data instead of complex images or text so that the complexity of the data does not get in our way of understanding the concept. The central idea behind diffusion models is the concept of random walk through the data space, starting from a noise sample. We train a neural network first that, given noisy data in the input, can provide denoised data in the output. In other words, the neural network knows how to denoise the data. In the final stage of the process, from complete noise, we iteratively denoise noisy data, generating better and better data in each iteration. But how do we train the neural network so that it can denoise data? Here is how we train a neural network that can denoise data. Let us say that we have 1000 images of dogs. For each image or data point, we add a little bit of noise. So we have the noisy images now. We then add a little bit of noise again to the noisy image that we have. Then we add a little bit of noise again. We keep adding noise in iterations, let's say 50 iterations. After 50 iterations, the original image might not be recognizable anymore. But that is not the point here, because we are creating our training data through noising or diffusion in iterations. For each original image or data point, we now have a little bit of a noisy version of that image. Also, for that little bit of noisy image, we have a further noisy image. For each step of noisy image, we have the next level of noisy image. For each original image, we have 50 pairs of consecutive images. Each pair has an image and the next level of noise added image. We have 50 consecutive pairs of images for each of the 1000 images in the data. Now we can create a neural network for the training of denoising. During training, we put a noisy image in the input. In the output, we provide the image with which noise was added to obtain the noisy image in the input. For each original image, all 50 pairs of images are used for training, such that for each pair, the noisy image is in the input and the previous image in the pipeline is an expected output or the target. During training, the neural network sets its weights in such a way that it learns how to denoise a given image. Note that it does not drastically learn to create an image from an entire set of random noise, rather it only learns how to denoise an image a bit, because in the input and in the output we only provide two consecutive images from our noising sequence or diffusion sequence. This training data preparation may have different strategies. In some strategies, instead of the noisy image being the neural network's output, the noise itself is used as the target output. Then the noise is subtracted from the input for denoising. For images and more complex data, sometimes training the neural network to predict only the noise part is more effective than predicting the entire denoised image. Anyway, in this video, our neural network will have noisy data as input and the expected target or the output is the denoised data. From complete noise, we will not get the fine looking data in just one iteration. We'll have to gradually denoise the data in iterations to reach good data. After the neural network is trained to generate new data, we simply start from noise, then denoise the noise. We have better data point or better image. We take it and feed it back to the model. We take the output and feed it back. We go quite some number of steps and we will see that we have 
images that look similar to our original images. If we used images of dogs in our original data, we'll see that dog images are generated. A generated dog will likely look different than any of the 1000 original dog images. It sounds like magic. Let us see how much of this magical concept we can implement using Python. Of course, with a simple dataset for simplicity. I will not use any image datasets in this video. For image datasets, the neural network will have to be much more complex than the one that we'll be discussing today. I am using Google Colab. The free version of Google Colab is just fine for this exercise. That means your own Python equipped laptop or desktop should be fine too. I'm using PyTorch to create the neural network. You can use TensorFlow if you want. The understanding of the concept is all that matters here. First, we want to assure that we use a GPU if it is available, as it will make our computations much faster. CPU is fine too. These lines of code detect whether a GPU with CUDA support is active and sets the device accordingly. If not, it falls back to the CPU. During the shoot of this video, I used a GPU. You can activate the GPU by going to runtime, change runtime type, and selecting the hardware accelerator to T4 GPU in Google Colab. Anyway, I'm using GPU here and the code is good for both CPU and GPU. Now let us create our original data. As said before, we will not use any image or text data. We will create a dataset for which we will know feature relationships. Let us create a dataset where the second feature has a value two times larger than the first feature, and the third feature has a value two times larger than the second feature. We are going to create a matrix with 100 samples or rows and three features. We have assured that the specific relationships between the features are maintained. So now in a row, if the first feature is two, the second feature would be four, and the third feature would be eight. Because the second feature is twice as much large than the first feature, and the third feature is twice as much as the second feature. At the end, when we will generate a data, we expect that the generated data points will have this characteristic. Each row in the original data is analogous to a dog image of our example where we discussed the process of diffusion. Okay, we now have 100 three-dimensional data points. For each of the 100 rows, we will iteratively add noise. We will add noise in 50 iterations. We will add small random values in each iteration. This noise factor will assure that whatever random number we generate is brought down to a small number. So this noise factor is a multiplicative factor multiplied by random noise. This random function, rand underscore like, generates data with random numbers from a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. We are multiplying the random value by our noise factor 0.2. That is, we are adding small noise in each iteration. Notice that our first column of the original data has numbers varying from one to 10. The second and the third columns have larger numbers, given that we increased them. So adding small values of noise, lesser than one in magnitude, sounds reasonable. We can play with this noise factor to do further research. The main point is to add a small amount of noise in each iteration. Now the variable diffused data steps has 50 data sets, each with 100 rows. One dataset is noisier than the previous one. I am printing this variable to check what it has. Notice that the first dataset, which is the original dataset inside the variable diffused data steps, has the second value of a row double than the first value. The third value is also twice as much as the second value. This is true for all first 100 rows, which represent the original dataset. 
The next dataset has a little bit added noise with the first dataset. The relationship between features are still visible, but the relationships are not exact like in the original dataset. The further down we go, the relationship will be lesser prominent, of course, because more random noise has been added. So we have diffused our data in 50 iterations. That is, our training data has been generated. Next, we create the tensor dataset that will allow us to train our neural network efficiently. Let us take a glimpse into the diffused data variable now. Each sample now is a pair of subsequent diffused data steps. This variable dataset is the tensor dataset that our data loader will use. We then create our data loader using the dataset variable that contains the diffused data. This line of code to create the dataset variable transforms the diffused data pairs into a format that can be easily used with PyTorch's data loading utilities, facilitating the batching and shuffling of data during the training process. Here, we define our neural network model. It consists of three linear layers, interspersed with a ReLU activation function and dropout layers. You might ask why I added the dropout layers. I first created a neural network without the dropout layers. What happened was that the network learned the denoising steps too well and it did not focus on learning the relationships between features. I figured the neural network was overfitting, so to prevent overfitting, I added the dropout layers. In this model, dropout is applied right after the activation function of the first and second layers. During each training step, each output of the ReLU function has a 20% chance of being set to zero before passing it as input to the next layer. We also move the model to the appropriate device, either GPU or CPU. We will be using the Adam optimizer with a learning rate of 0.001 and mean squared error loss. This setup is quite common for regression problems, which is what this neural network is solving. Now we enter the training loop. We train our model for 500 epochs, using the noisy data to predict better data. The data loader contains pairs of noisy data and the corresponding expected better data, which are separated in the line for batch noisy, uh, comma batch data in data loader. The line separates each mini batch into two parts, batch noisy that contains the noisy data for the current batch and batch data which contains the corresponding data from the previous step in the diffusion process. The neural network model will learn to reverse the diffused data. Finally, we enter the generation phase. We start with completely random data and then use our training model to reverse it step by step. First, the random noise data with a bit of added noise data goes to the model. Denoised data comes out. With the generated denoised data, we add slight more noise and feed it back to the model. We get the next level of generated data. We iterate 50 times. In each iteration, we added a little bit of noise to mimic the diffusion process. By adding noise, we are simulating the reverse process, starting from a noised state and gradually denoising it. The result is a generated dataset that should resemble our original data. This is the generated data. Note that this data has been generated from complete noise. Looking at features, we see that the second feature is almost twice the first column. The third column values are almost twice the values in the second column. This is amazing. I cannot believe it. I want to see if this data is really generated from noise where there was no relationship between the features. So I am printing this generated data variable in each iteration. 
the first printed generated data should not have any relationship between the features. Slowly, the relationship that the second feature is double than the first and the third feature is double than the second should be more prominent in the latter parts of the generation iterations. Wow! Notice that this is the random noise. There is no relationship between the features. We have 7.9, then 7.7, .7, then 1.4, these three numbers. The known relationship is not there. Then we have 2.3, 1.7, 10.2. There is no relationship. We have 2.2, 9.7, 5.35. There is no relationship. The first step has all random noise. This is what is the denoised version after the first step. This is fed to the model. The next version is generated. Notice that by this iteration, I think it is the fourth iteration, we started to see the relationship. The second feature is close to twice as much as the first one. The third feature is also twice as much as the second one. The relationship is more and more prominent as we move forward with the iterations. I will comment out this analysis line. We wanted to create a diffusion-driven generative model that generates data from random noise, and the data should have the second feature two times larger than the first feature, and the third feature should have values two times the values in the second feature. This generative model is doing that starting from random noise. Diffusion is a powerful approach to generating data. Generative models can help you augment your datasets for better modeling. Now that you have a clear understanding of how diffusion works, go ahead and see if you can use the concept for your projects on your datasets. Watch till the end of this video to enjoy some deleted scenes. Like this video and share it with your friends. See you soon in another video. Is the microphone working? I think so. I will comment out this analysis. We wanted to create a deficient driven, de deficient driven, driven. Like this video, share it with your friends. See you soon. See.